gonadotropin releasing hormones and their effects. So before we discuss the effects of these medications, let's just quickly go over how our bodies produce sex hormones in terms of the hypothalamus, pituitary, and the gonad axis. Gonadotropin releasing hormone is naturally produced from the hypothalamus. And then because it has a positive effect on the anterior pituitary, that causes it to produce and also store hormones FSH and LH. Then when appropriate, these hormones now are going to be released into the circulation and then they're going to bind to receptors that are located on the gonads. And binding of these receptors is also going to cause a positive effect and stimulate the final product of this axis, which is sex hormones. Sex hormones being testosterone for males and estrogen for females. Now the key thing I want to point out here is that at this end part of this axis, the increased production of sex hormones will actually have a negative effect on the hypothalamus because it's a negative feedback, which means when there's sex hormone production, it's going to have the opposite effect on the hypothalamic stimulation. This negative feedback makes complete sense because if you already have enough hormones, you don't have to stimulate the hypothalamus to produce more. Now, in the case of agonists of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, what that does is artificially increase the hormones that would be naturally produced by the hypothalamus. However, what's interesting about these agonists is that they actually have two completely different, in fact opposite effects, depending on how you administer them. And you can administer them in two ways, in a pulsatile fashion, which is low amounts multiple times in a day, or in a continuous, which means on a daily basis you get an influx of the agonist. Pulsatile administration causes an overall increase in sex hormone production, while continuous is going to cause an overall decrease. But let's get into that in more detail. So, these are the two ways you can administer these agonists again. Pulsatile and continuous. Let's talk about pulsatile first. So, pulsatile fashion is going to stimulate sex hormone production. It's going to have an agonistic effect. And it's going to upregulate receptors in that cascade. And pulsatile fashion of this medication is, is used in fertility treatments. And the way I think of this is P for pulsatile, but also P for pregnancy, pro-pregnancy. So it's used in fertility treatments. Now, on the other hand, we also have continuous fashion of this medication. Now, if this medication is administered in a continuous fashion, it's going to decrease sex hormone production. And that essentially means it's going to have an anti-fertility effect. In other words, this also means it has an antagonistic effect on sex hormone. And within the sex hormone production cascade, receptors will be downregulated. This way of administering the agonist is used to treat prostate and other sex hormone sensitive cancers. Now, the way I think about this is C for continuous, but also C for cancer treatments. And that's how I remember it. Before we wrap up this video, there's one crucial high yield point I want to make. When you administer this drug in a continuous fashion, the intended effect, which is anti-fertility antagonistic effect of sex hormones, takes actually two weeks to come into effect. After two weeks, you will see a reduction in sex hormones, but for the first two weeks, it actually increases sex hormones in the same way pulsatile administration would. So patients who use this for cancer, it is important that they keep it up daily and long term.